Hi there, my name is Matthew B. Lamont, and I'm here to give you a cautionary tale. To those with a YouTube channel, I would like to warn you that it's the equivalent to dodging a bullet. So many of you subscribers out there, and those watching my videos, know about uh, stop-motion rarities. I've been uploading them as of 2019 or 2020. Why? Because of stop-motion animation and they're rare. But I would like to say that with every up, there's a down. Sure, you upload a video that's like rare, unusual, hard to find, never seen in decades. And guess what? People love it. And you'll get subscribers for it. What if I told you that something that rare would lead to, well, a copyright strike, even though it's in some sort of public domain, or in the public domain, or you think it's public domain, but it's really not. You get a copyright strike. What happened to me was when I uploaded the 1974 documentary, Animation Pie, a quirky little film about student animators. It was great, but I got a copyright strike saying that it was owned by a French news show, specifically an episode that aired on April 18th, 1978. Okay, time out. What is this? 1978? This I gotta see, so I looked up the new show. It was archived on Daily Motion. I watched it, and it was a report about stop motion animation. And I looked at it, and I say, wait a minute, I recognize that clip, that's from Animation Pie. And Animation Pie was shown on British television sometime in the 80s and 90s. And it was broadcasted, but they deleted the dinosaur on the loose scene and the Perils of Pauline parody. You know, the girl tied to the train tracks and they got parodied on such cartoons like Popeye, Mighty Mouse, or Dudley Do-Right. Okay, so... What happened was that I noticed that in the video from the French news show, they just took a clip from it, but it had French subtitles. But they also took clips from such films as Vicious Cycles by Chuck Menville and Len Jansen from 1967 and Claymation. Three-dimensional three-dimensional animation in clay, something like that. And they use these clips, but they don't own them. I mean, when you're doing a news report, just give credit to the source, but just don't own them. And I thought to myself, it seemed, doesn't seem right at all. I mean, the people who uploaded Vicious Cycles and Claymation three-dimensional animation in clay, they were uploaded and they didn't get any copyright strikes from that source. I uploaded it and I got a copyright strike? This is unfair. So, the next day, this was Saturday, because, you know, stop-motion rarities was uploaded every Saturday, if you remember watching the promos. I just went to make my claim and appeal, saying that this is some kind of public domain, just like the films Vicious Cycles and Claymation from 1978. I stated that uh, the ones on the broadcast, on the French t TV show news broadcast, they had French subtitles. This one didn't have it. And it is owned by, co-owned by AV Geeks, that is a company that collects all these obscure educational films from the 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s, early to late, I guess, that 
had all these strange, obscure films, and they and they show it on YouTube, on archive.org, on their live streams, and I just told them how unfair it was. And that was Sunday. And I just made my claim, wrote my name in the bottom, and I said, okay, we'll notify you within one week. So I waited. I prayed. And finally, what do you know? On Monday, last Monday that is, I was so surprised with awe that they let me go. They let it slide. They noticed it. They understood. My video's up and it's getting more views. And I'm in the clear. I'm out of danger. What a relief. <laughs> oh, man. It's like fighting the law of some sort. Or not like fighting the law, but going in some sort of fight. Hoping you're winning. It's like David and Goliath. So... If you think this happened to me before, it happened to me another time where I upload, I mean last time, sometime in the late 20-teens, I uploaded the music video Monster, a Japanese song by Japanese pop group Pink Lady, well they're specifically a pop duo, and it had clips from uh, Count Quackula, yeah Quackula from Filmation and the British cartoon Danger Mouse, and it was great. But uh, I got a copyright strike, and I just told them that uh, I'm not making money off of it. Just follow the fair use thing, and what do you know, it's back up. This was 2017. Two years later, I took it down because of the Copa scare. Now I can't upload it back up. Huh. Dang, Copa scare. So that was just me, but it happened to other people too. Why do you think the shaky recovery is not on my YouTube channel, Bon Vimeo? Because of uh, copyrighted music. And Animat, you know from Animat's crazy cartoon podcast, the guy in the orange fedora, curly hair, wears glasses? Yes, I watch his show every Wednesday. He just got a copyright strike, then he made his claim, and now he's in the clear. But boy, that was dangerous. I'm sure this happened to me, this happened to James Rolfe, it happens to Matt Burnett, aka Animat, and if you don't know who James Rolfe is, he's known as the Angry Video Game Nerd. And it happened to a lot of other people too. I had a lot of troubles with Toho. You know Toho Company Limited, the Japanese film company that makes all those Godzilla movies? Yeah. I mean, back when I had my old channel back in 2006 to 2012, I got a copyright strike stating that uh, the the in, the visuals, the clips from my first music video, One More Time, by Daft Punk, it got a copyright strike from Toho Company Limited. And let's not forget uh, all those Robot Jones videos I uploaded before I got my channel terminated. Toho and I have a history of not getting along. I mean, if you watch my trailer reaction video to the second trailer of Godzilla Minus One, the uh, beginning and ending takes music from the 1954 film. I tried to recreate it, I tried to make a parody of the movie to create hype and to get a laugh out of the spoof because I love to spoof like I did with my other trailer reaction videos. I parodied uh, Wes Anderson movies, I parodied King Kong, I parodied Ultraman, I parodied Sesame Street, I parodied The Electric Company, I parodied Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers, I parodied King Kong vs. Godzilla, I parodied Jurassic Park, and even the other films too. Oh yes, I parodied Looney Tunes as well. How will I present my videos just like in a bland fashion? Just say, oh hi there, my name is Matthew Bielamont and welcome to Trailer Action Videos. No, I got to do a style, like I did with my trailer action videos to the Solar Opposite Seasons or Specials, even, or Animaniacs Reboot. So I don't know what, why, just why did I get the plug pulled on parodies. Do you think I should stop making uh, 
a parody of something that the trailer Trump reacting to is based on. I mean, I want to do it in a comedic fashion of some way. Not gonna lie, but I was going to parody uh, the Planet of the Apes opening with the stars flying by with the music by Jerry Goldsmith, except the stars bump into each other. It's just for a laugh. So I don't know what's wrong here. I mean, it's just for parody purposes to create hype. That's all I gotta say. And now, I like to say that uh, I got in the clear and YouTube cares about copyright, but they do not care about the safety of our children when it comes to surfing their site. They just put all these characters for kids and characters that are not for kids and put them to these situations that are just too darn shocking, nightmare fuel inducing and traumatizing. They don't care about that. Well, they need to care about that, but hey, that's just another story. I'm asking you a question. Did you ever face a problem where you upload a video, but you got a copyright strike, and you had this David and Goliath type battle where you have to make your claim, and did you win or did you lose? Tell me about it at the comments down below. So this is Matthew Bielemont saying do not forget to like and subscribe and have a nice day.